Hi, I'm just having a relaxing time this afternoon. I've been at church this morning uh, ministering God's Word. Um, I was speaking on the power of the Word of God and how when we hide the Word of God in our heart, you know, God can do for us more than we could ask or imagine beyond our wildest dreams. Uh, if we believe in the promises that God has made to us and we stick with Him through thick and thin, then He will fulfill that promise to us. So it's all about the Bible and the power of the Word of God and what it can do for us. But today I want to speak about um, sometimes we're distracted when we're reading the Bible. It's very hard for us to concentrate. And there are various reasons why we're distracted. And I just want to give a couple of reasons today. I know there are many others, but um, hopefully the ones I mentioned today will be of help to you. I'd like to read uh, Psalm 119, verse 130, to start with. Um, the entrance of your word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. And we're talking about the Bible here, the word of God, from the beginning to end, the Old and New Testament. And, and the Bible is saying here, God is saying to us through his word, the psalmist is saying, under the inspiration of God, that this word gives understanding to us. It gives light to us. In other words, it, uh, it makes things clear to us. We, we can see clearly what God is saying. We can see clearly which path he wants us to take. So this is very important for the Christian. We need to know where we're going. And then when God was instructing Joshua, Joshua understood that meditating on God's word were bringing success. I just want to read from Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. And it says this. This book, God is speaking to Joshua. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. So we see again that the word of God, what it will do for us, it would make Joshua strong, prosperous, and give him success. He was about to enter into the promised land. And this uh, promise applies to all Christians today, that we need to value the word of God, because it will do great things for us in our lives, and, uh, and we will be successful if we love God's word. I want to encourage you to do that today. If we want to be an effective Christian, then we need to be Bible uh, readers. I'm not saying students. I'm not talking about getting bogged down with theology. It's good if you get led that way to be a Bible student, study theology. I've studied theology for years, and it really does you good to do it if you've got that hunger and a thirst from God to do it. But the majority of Christians just like to sit there, read and enjoy the Bible, and they're very effective Christian workers, and, and very many of them are doing great works for God. And they just read the Bible, and they realize the power in it, and so they, uh, they, can, they are, are a, a continual Bible students daily. They will sit there and read the Bible and pull it out every day and read it. Uh, they're not one-off Christians that, you know, every now and then when they feel like it, will pull out the Bible and read it. If you want to be a strong Christian, then you need to get the Bible out every day and read something from the Bible. But there are many distractions. We all have to admit that. Ministers who have been on the road a long time need to realize, and, and I'm sure the majority of them do realize, that uh, sometimes these distractions um, can cause us real problems when we can't concentrate when we're reading the Bible. So just let me mention a few of them. Number one, our minds are preoccupied with other things. Sometimes our minds are so full of clutter, it's almost impossible to read the Bible and to take it in. We've got too many things in our mind. So what do we do? Well, what we have to do, we have to lay those things aside, like you do when you come and worship God. You've got to put them, shelve them, Clear your mind from these things until you've spent time with God and then you can come back to them later. You can't have your mind full of these things and then meditate upon the word of God. It, it's nigh on impossible. So clear your mind of these things. Number two, we're in a rush and busy with other things. That's another thing where we have to say, no, I'm going to give God time now and his word and those things are going to wait. So make them wait. 
And I can tell you this today, if you give God that time, he'll make up the time to you, he'll double it. It's like tithing. When you give God to God your tithe, he'll multiply it back. It's the same with your time. So you tithe that time in reading the word of God. Now, number three, and this is the main point I want to make, we are being distracted by demonic forces. And this is the big distraction today because Satan knows the power of the word of God and the demons come to distract us from reading it. They put all kinds, they suggest all kinds of things to us to distract us. So we lose our concentration and we have a struggle and we keep, we forget things. As we're reading the word, we forget what we're reading halfway through and we have to go over it again and again and again. So what do we do? And, and we're finding it a real battle to read the word of God and it puts some people off. I've learned to discipline myself in this over the years, not to be put off from reading God's word, no matter how great the distractions are. But we can do something about these distractions. Because I'm telling you today that the, the devil knows the power of the word of God in your life, what it will do for you, good things. And he doesn't want you to have these good things. So let me um, just uh, try and help you today. He knows that we will be strong through the word. So he'll suggest all kinds of things because he uses the power of suggestion. He did it with Jesus Christ and his temptation in the wilderness. And he will do it with Christians today. His tactics haven't changed. He still uses the power of suggestion. The battlefield is the mind. So what we, do we do when we've been distracted by demonic power? Well, the answer is we rebuke the devil from our minds in the name of Jesus Christ. That's very simple, but you have to actually say, I rebuke you, Satan, and he works in demonic powers from my, from my mind, and I cast you out now, and I cut you off, and I bind you up and close and lock the door in your face, coming back to me again in Jesus Christ's name. Now, you need to do that, and the devil will obey you because he knows the power in the name of Jesus Christ, and you have authority to cast the demonic spirits away from your mind and bind them up. You need to do that. But you also need to cover your mind with the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, some ministers don't say you don't need to cover your mind with the blood of Jesus. You don't need to cover yourself with the blood of Jesus. And they even preach against the blood of Jesus. But if you're involved in deliverance ministry, or have been, you'll realize the power of the blood of Jesus. Satan knows the power of the blood of Jesus, and he trembles at the power of the blood of Jesus. He's afraid of the blood of Jesus. And the moment you apply the blood of Jesus Christ to your mind, it cleanses your mind from it for a start, and, and also the devil will flee from the blood. I've often used the blood of Jesus when I've been delivering people from a, a satanic oppression and possession. And I've seen the power of the blood, what it does. Now they get, and now the devil trembles at the power of the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus Christ. So use the name of Jesus Christ to cast the demons away and to bind them up. Then cover yourself with the blood of Jesus. Apply the blood of Jesus to your mind. Say, I cover my mind now with the blood of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. It's good to praise the Lord, isn't it? Finally, when you've done all this and your mind is cleansed and the light of God has come into your mind, put the helmet of salvation on to protect your mind. Literally, in faith, put the helmet on. It's a protection for your mind. We need that helmet on. We need a sound, peaceful mind if we're going to read God's word. And then, when you open your Bible, you're going to enjoy it. Read the book. It will do you good. Thank you for listening.